Today we're going to continue talking about salvation. And we've been on this for quite a while, so today we're going to talk about four different types of people. We've already looked at several different, uh, we've already talked about several aspects of salvation. I still have some, yep, yeah, I still have some candy. I'm going to, I'm going to throw some candy out. Uh, so I want to ask you guys, uh, I want to ask you guys um, about previous messages. Just stuff we've learned about the gospel, all right? Or like you see, poor guys staring these down hard. <laughs> um, about the gospel, all right? So we learned that we all need it. And anybody know why we need to be saved? Wrong, but no. <laughs> why do we need to be saved? Okay, he said eternity. What about eternity? Why do we need it? Why do you need saving? We have sin. Because you're a sinner. We're all sinners. Yeah. And there's only one way out. I'll give you this. That was an easy one, but <laughs> nope. It gets there, then, no. All right. And so we learned about the gospel. And uh, I, I put so, a couple things. There's some, some aspects of the gospel that make it powerful. Uh, there was the gospel is... Uh, um, there is something in the gospel. The gospel is the the blank of God. Um, <clears throat> anybody have any ideas? We did a couple. The Bible is, or there is. Uh, shoot, now I'm forgetting. My goodness. All right. Well, I'll tell you because I can't remember. There's the gospel is the power of God. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God to save. I'm not ashamed of it. This good news, there's power in the message uh, of salvation. All right, and I, I already forgot what this one is. My, my bad. My brain's fried. I was sick, so the left side isn't working. All right, so you didn't get that one, so I'll give myself a candy. <laughs> All right, anything else? We learned about predestination. Anybody know that there's two major sides to it? What are they? Anybody? Uh, Calvinism. And? Armenianism. Ooh, Steve, we're going to have to give you half. you got to speak this with Kim. <laughs> All right, Calvinism, and I think Kim said it. Armenianism. All right. Uh, I won't ask you all the different <laughs> different tale, levels of everything, but last week we talked about something. We talked about why why do we need to know? Why did God even put predestination in the Bible? If we're going to be so confused about it, if every time we look at it we're just going to turn the page because we don't want to think about it, why is it there? Anybody have an answer? You can give us a new one, too, just whatever you think. Repeat the question. Why did God tell us about predestination? Why did he even reveal it? Why didn't he just keep it to himself? Why do we need to know? It gives us assurance. It gives us assurance. How so? Because he says so. What do you mean? He says he, to those he predestined, he... This and this, this. So you have, so we, so you have assurance knowing that God picked you out before. Because of all the things that Paul says, if God predestined you, He also glorified you. Right. He also glorified you. He also. It's pretty good there. Yeah, I'm not gonna take that one. Yeah, <laughs> hey, Rick, man, you gotta throw some answers. Yeah, I don't even come all right. So why did God even tell us about predestination? That's what He said to give you assurance. So that you could know that this is not something that just happened. He's been planning this all along. And you're just caught in the middle of it. Come on in, old boys. Just caught in the middle. Alright, so uh, let's see if I can give Rick, give a question for Rick to get. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Who wrote the book of Romans? Don't, don't answer, let Rick answer it. Who wrote the book of Romans? One of these, my friend. Not you. Um, Just wild guess, man. This guy was a Pharisee. 
You know who knew who wrote the book of Romans? I don't know who wrote you don't know either. No candy. Sorry. He wasn't here. Paul wrote the book of Romans. Yeah, Paul wrote the book of Romans. You guys are talking about who? Who really wrote the book of Romans? God. God did. So you know it's crazy how that works. Oh yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you guys get hot, just let these guys know. It's um, hot. It's hot. You want to shut that off? I'm going to open a window. We always have heat problems. We all have different climates. It's pretty warm. It's pretty good. It's pretty warm. Yeah. So, um, you have five layers we're, gonna, we're talking about <laughs> salvation. <laughs> and out of everybody in this room, how many people can say 100% I know I'm saved? One person, two, three and a half, four. All right, four out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five. All right, half half of people here. David, did you raise your hand? No, you're saved for a hundred percent. He's undecided. All right, five out of that's uh, out of eleven. Five people are confident. We need ten for ten. <laughs> today, today you're gonna, we're gonna pick a side. Yes, sir. And what does statistics say about that? Uh, in in I don't remember the exact statistics, but one out of ten. One out of ten. It's truly. Sick. It's truly okay. And you know we 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 have no idea. You know we nobody knows who's. You can know, but on the outside looking. At, at, you know, I could never say, yes, you're saved. That's not my place. But you can know. But I can't know for you. But you can. So, I mean, statistics, we could do the statistics, but we, you know, we, whoever's doing it will never. But it, mo the majority of America says they're a Christian. Are they really? Or are we all really? And that's why we've been studying this. Is because a lot of people will go to a concert, raise their hand, Come up, pray, boom, I'm saved. Go back, nothing changes. And are you really saved? And that's what we've been ch chatting about. So today we're going to look at something. After all the talks we've been doing, there's four different types of conclusions that can be drawn from this. There's four different types of people you could become after believing that you've been saved. All right? The first one is a people with assurance. The first type of person is that there's a person who's totally unsaved, totally unsaved, and they know it, okay? Totally unsaved. I need a black one. All right, anybody know anybody who's unsaved and they're very sure of it? Unsaved and know it. Anybody besides Satan? <laughs> Unsaved, and I know it. I know if I die today, I'm going to hell. I know it. I think Ozzy Osbourne has said that a few times. Does the PlayStation count? I know somebody on PlayStation. Sure, on PlayStation. He's a real person. Yeah. So that's a type of assurance, right? <laughs> we're, if we're talking about assurances, I know for sure that I am not going. All right? So that's one type of person. Assurance that I know I'm not. And there's people who who are there and maybe people maybe we've been there too. All right? So this is this is full assurance here. All right? They know. I thought that was a pun. Full assurance. Full assurance. Full. I don't know. Total assurance. A full all the Ah, okay. That's a good, good idea. All right. Full assurance. Um, all right. Then there's a second type of person. The person that's saved and they know it. Saved. Complete opposite. And know it. All right. And we have five and a half of them here today. Possibly six. Saved and they know it. And this is also full assurance. And um, I don't know if you've heard of people who 
said that they remember the day and the hour when they got saved. I don't know, have you ever heard anybody? You know, like, I, I know the day when God came into my heart and changed me. From that day forward, I've been a new person. Anybody here have an experience like that? They know the day and the hour. Julio? Mm, every second. Every second. Well, there was a particular time. Oh, no. But we all should feel safe. Yeah. That we're safe the well, like the rebirth. Yeah. Like the, I know when I was born, June 18, 1989. I have no, I don't remember what time it was, but that's when I was born. So when was my real, my second birth? When was I reborn? You got baptized? Well, that's the, that's the thing. It's, it could be that moment. Some people know exactly when they felt the change inside. They knew it from that point. They've, you know, you heard it. I accepted Christ, and I didn't want a cigarette or drug. I didn't. You know, from that moment forward, I was a changed man. Some of us don't have that, but when you have that moment, it gives you it gives you a pretty good assurance that I know from that day forward I was changed. So that's a type of insurance. Like Billy Graham, he had that. He knew, you know, he gave his life to God. So from this day forward, I'm yours, and boom. All right, so that's the second type of person. Full assurance. And there's a there's four types. The third type is they're saved. And don't know it. All right, this one's a little tricky. But maybe most of us fall into that category. Is you're saved and you don't know it. <clears throat> There's a story, Billy Graham's wife. She would always kind of doubt because she never had that experience like him. Or like people to where they know the day and the hour they got saved. She didn't have that experience. She said it was, it just kind of gradually developed. I don't know when or how. But does that mean she isn't saved? It just means that, you know, she didn't have that particular moment. And maybe she didn't have the assurance like Billy Graham did because of that, but she was totally saved nonetheless. She just wasn't totally aware of it. And I think a lot of us even in this room today, are, are at that spot where you've been saved and, and I don't, I don't know. You know, I think when we first started this, nobody raised their hand. You know, that was like five, six weeks ago. Everybody's like, I don't know, you know. I raised my hand. Josh raised his hand. That's right. He raises his hand a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so there's people who are saved and they don't know it, which again, there's people in this room. that I, I was there most of my life. I remember that. Uh, I think the what, reason why this particular topic is, is important to me is because I was there most of my life. I think I told you guys a story early on is uh, I went to a Hillsong con concert and they, saw, they were singing this song called The Aftermath. And in the bridge it says, and I know that you're with me, and I know you're with me, and I was watching him sing, I was like, how do you do that, how the heck do you know God's with you, I have never felt that, you know, I, from that moment, I did not know, I didn't have that confidence, and I didn't know how to get it, and I wanted it though, so you give me that, so I just started singing it too, yes, I know it, you know, crying, everything, um, but that, I feel like that moment changed me to where I knew it was possible, but I wanted to know, you know. I, I had gotten baptized, but I still didn't have that assurance. I, I didn't know. So I, I believed that I was already saved. I just didn't quite know it. I didn't have that assurance. Um, and then there's the last person, which could be in this room too. The last person. Thanks for saved. Who's unsaved? But knows they are saved. All right. That's a tricky one too. They're unsaved, but they know that they are saved. Uh, so, I don't know if you've read the verse, I'm going to read it to you in Matthew 7, 22. 
This is how we started off. Uh, Matthew 7, 22. Let's see here. Matthew, Matthew. Somewhere in the middle. Sort Shouldn't of. be, but they think yeah, they're safe. Yeah, they think that they're safe. But they actually, they, they feel like they know it. Uh, here it is. I'm going to start at 20, 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. 22. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. All right? So it sounds like these guys were pretty confident they were getting in. I uh, said, I could, look, at, I did a lot of good stuff. I cast demons out. Uh, I already forgot what You know, I did miracles. I did signs and wonders. You know, I did this awesome stuff. Why the heck shouldn't I get in? But Jesus said, I never knew you. All right, so there's people who are unsaved, who are very confident that they are. And I think that's the scary place. And as we said, 70, 60 to 70 percent of Americans claim to be Christians, claim to think that they're going to heaven. Is everyone really going to heaven? Is a question. You know, and I, I don't want to answer that really for everybody. You know, only God knows. But I think it's safe to say that um, a lot of people aren't truly living it out. You know, there's something that he said there. Only the people who do the will of my Father. Now, everybody can say, I believe in Jesus. But do you really want to take a step of faith to do something that shows it? You know, attending church is, is easy. That's easy. We can all do that. But surrendering a sin or, or you know, following Him daily or trusting, you know, that's, that's where it takes some, that's where it takes real, real faith uh, to do something like that. But we, that's, we're going to talk about that next week. So there's four different types of people. Uh, think of some people who are very confident that they're going to heaven uh, today, like um, Muslims, you know. Do you believe that uh, Muslims are going to go to heaven too? Any thoughts? I don't think so. You girl on the side? What do you think? You don't know? Anyone want to take a bold? Yes, sir. I don't think they are. You don't think they are? Okay. The only way into heaven is through Jesus Christ, and they don't believe in the Messiah or anything. Is that really the only way in? Yes. Is there really only one road <laughs> to get into heaven? Are you sure? I don't know. Really, what do you think? Mm, yeah, I think there's only one road. There is? All right, well, they, hey, look, they got some confidence. They're probably more bold than all of us in this room. Because they, they will kill themselves to, just to, <laughs> to get there. That they want to oh, I, I would never do that. I would not blow myself up, no matter what was ahead of me. Forget that. That takes some guts. And to think that their assurance is false, ugh, that's crazy. It's hard to it's hard to say the truth, you know. They're totally convinced that they're going, that we are wrong. And we're convinced they're wrong, you know. Who the heck's right? <laughs> you know? What is the truth though? You know, we we believe Jesus he lived, they believe he lived. They don't believe he was the son of God. They do not believe that he rose from the dead. And that's the main thing, is they believe he was just a prophet. They don't believe he was the son of God. They don't believe they need his forgiveness. They don't believe they need him for forgiveness. So, can you get into heaven without that? This question. Like, biblically, you can. So, that's one area to where there's a false assurance there. And they're very confident. Judaism as well. You know, there's Jews today um, who reject Jesus. Very, very confident that they're going in and we are not. False assurance, you know. 
So there's four different types of people, and I don't know where you guys are at. You know, you guys, as we've been talking about this, you have to take some time to self-examine yourself. You know, we talked about last week that I feel like more of us are more concerned with our Instagram status than we are about our eternal status. Who cares, you know? That's, I'll get to that when I'm about to die. But, you know, it's, it's the most important thing. It really is. So are you unsaved and you know it? Are you saved and you know it? Are you saved and don't know it? Or are you really not saved, but you really believe you are? We're, we're going to talk about next a few things that will help you understand which side you're really on. Alright, so, anybody want to tell us where you're at? Who's going to hell here? Anybody? I'm just kidding. I'll give you candy. I'm just kidding. Alright, so there's, a, there's three errors. Uh, there's three errors that can arise to make you, to make you have a false uh, assurance. And the first one is called universalism. Anybody know what that means? That everybody's going to make it into heaven? All right, that everybody's going to get there. Universalism. Anybody ever heard of that? Universalism? Yeah, when we studied it. Let's see here. I sent myself a, a, a YouTube I want you guys to watch. It's like 30 seconds. I'm an atheist. I'm a humanist. It's hard for me to characterize my belief system. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Taoist and naturalist. Spiritual humanist. Explorer of liberal Christianity. A spiritual person. Deeply agnostic. We're all pretty different. Free thinkers. On a different path. Many different beliefs. But we all worship at the same church. The same church. But we go to the same church. We go to the same church. We all we go, go to the same, same church. church. Hmm. That's it. Anybody ever heard of that? Oh, yeah. It, it's actually pretty big. There's one in, um, in, in Virginia, we passed by in Loudoun County, that is all types of religion in one church. Mm -hmm. So the belief of universalism, which is actually very, very popular, it's a bit like in Palo Alto, I see it all over the place, Mountain View, is that everybody's going. All roads lead to God. In the end, everybody's going to get to heaven. Everybody has a different interpretation, but we're all seeking the same God. And, um, let's see, what, uh, there was something I was going to say. Uh, oh yeah, that's like, uh, punish, this is the definition. Punishment in the afterlife was for a limited period, which the soul was purified and prepared for eternity in the presence of God. So is it after you die, everybody goes through this purification process, eventually gets to God universalism. Everybody eventually will go there. So, whether you believe in Jesus or not, does not matter. You're going to go eventually. You might have to be purified longer after death, but you're going. That's the belief of universalism, alright? So, if you believe universalism, maybe you believe you're saved. But you really aren't. Because that's not how it works. And the Bible, we all of our, all of our understanding comes from the Bible. You know, and that we believe is the Word of God. So, it's very clear in the Bible that that is not how it works. There's one judgment, and you're going to be judged for what you've done. And the only thing that's going to save you is if you, Jesus, you know, that you have the blood over you. All right, so that's the first assurance. Or that's the first error, is universalism. All right, there's a second error, which it might take up the rest of the time. Second error is called this. Legalism. Anybody know what this is? Sounds Jewish. Sounds Jewish. Anybody here going to take a crack at it for some candy? Legalism. <clears throat> All right. It's works righteousness. Alright, I think this is probably the most common type of assurance, is that we derive our assurance from 
our good works, from our obedience to the laws. That's where we get our assurance. That's an error in assurance because it's based on your works. Conservative, conservative Jewish? It is Jewish. Yeah. I mean, that was, that was the Old Testament. You know, it was based on your obedience to the laws. Is, yeah, that was the covenant. You had to obey these laws. Be more Orthodox Jewish. Orthodox Jews. All right, so let me read you a definition. The belief that salvation demands or depends upon total obedience to the letter of the law, coupled with the neglect of its fundamental concerns and preoccupation with human legal traditions. The first part is what a, the belief that salvation demands or depends upon total obedience to the letter of the law. All right, I, uh, for me, this is how I was. This is how I thought. And this is why I've never truly had assurance because it was all based on my performance, my obedience to the law. Uh, growing up, I never, um, I grew up in the hood, so uh, some of you guys might have known the area, it's called the Horseshoe, and uh, that's where I grew up. And I grew up around a lot of people who were doing drugs, drinking, gang banging, uh, sleeping with girls, guy, you know, at young ages. Um, uh, shooting people, uh, smoking weed, doing drugs, everything you can think of, uh, all right there in the hood. And, and I didn't do any of that. And I thought, I'm definitely saved. I don't do any of that stuff. My goodness, you guys are sinners. All the while, I was peeking at pornography, you know, here and there. Don't tell my sister that. So that, that's when I was young. And I thought I was going because I was doing pretty good. I didn't cuss. Um, still to this day, I maybe said it five times, you know, 30, almost 30 years. So I always felt because I was closer to obeying the entire law, I felt at least, that I had more assurance than anyone else because I did better. That's how I felt. And that's why... I never really felt true assurance because every time I sinned, I, was, I felt terrible. I, I'm definitely not saved because I'm a sinful wretch. You know, I messed up. And there was times, again, like pornography. There were times where I would look. And then after that, I felt terrible. I just, there is no way I'm saved. God, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm a mess. I don't know why you want me, you know, so I, for a week, I'd beat myself up, you know, and I'd have to whip myself, no, no, you know, I wouldn't do that, but, <laughs> um, but I would, but that's how I felt, I, I, my salvation, my assurance was based on legalism, works righteousness, I did not understand that Jesus saved me without anything I could ever do or done. I, I didn't know that. That if I sinned once or twice or however many times after that, that he would forgive me. I, I did not believe that. I didn't believe that. I thought if I sinned, that's definitely a sign that I'm not saved. Or if, even if I continue to do a certain sin, I'm not in. Um, so uh, I want to I read a verse. If you guys have your Bibles, open it up. Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 28. Because whether we care to admit it, I think most of us fall into this category. Uh, Romans 3, it's way at the, close to the end, Rick. Three quarters of the way through. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Past it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Next book. Romans chapter 3. Verse 21 all the way to 28. And if anybody has it, you can give us the first four verses, and Ricky will read the last four. Thank you. Anybody? All right, Jesse, go ahead. 21 to 24. Uh, 21 says, <clears throat> But now the righteousness of God <clears throat> has been manifested apart from the law, although the law <clears throat> and the prophets bear witness to it, 
the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no um, distinction, distinction? distinction. <clears throat> from all who have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. All right, explain that real quick. We got to catch this. You can read it again if you want. <laughs> Anybody have an explanation? Legalism doesn't save you. Okay. In short, yes. <clears throat> do you want to read it again, or do you got it? Uh, yeah, I can read it again. Well, explain it. No. Uh, explain it. Well, here it just it says that the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Okay. It's, it's telling you it's, it's apart from the law. It's not the same as the law. Uh, that the law was good, and it's time that the prophets bear witness to it, but the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ, so it's telling us that the righteousness through God is uh, given to us through Jesus Christ for all who believed in Him, and that there's no distinction for all who sin and fall short for the glory of God, and that all are justified, and it's by His grace, and it's a gift. Hmm. I don't know. Let me read my version. It's a little clearer. Okay. But, but now God has shown us a way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ, and this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. For everyone has sinned and we fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Jesus Christ when He freed us from the penalty of our sins. So what is He saying? He's saying, used to be through the law you were righteous. That's how you gained righteousness. Very, And you had to be very strict uh, in keeping it. The Pharisees and the Sadducees devoted their entire lives to being perfect at this. And Jesus said... Your righteousness has to be better than theirs. If they kept the law to the T, and it still wasn't good enough, what the heck else are you going to do? You know? that's And Jesus said, if, if you want to get into eternity, your righteousness has to exceed theirs. And how does that occur? Most of us, whether you, again, whether you believe it or not, most of us fall into the legalist category because it's so hard for us to believe that our works are poop. They, they, they do not contribute to our salvation. They're a result of it. And that's the difference. You doing things doesn't make you more saved. It doesn't help your salvation. It happens because you're saved. Total difference. The law does not make you righteous. And that's what the verse was saying. The law won't make you righteous. What does? Faith in Jesus. That's what it said. Clear. Faith in Jesus. Alright? Faith in Jesus. Alright, let's finish it. The last four. Rick, go ahead and hit us. Uh, 25, right? Yep, 25 to 28. Alright. Uh, whom God set forth as a propit propitiation. propitiation by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness because in His forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time His, right his righteousness that He might be just and the just the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus where is boasting then he is excluded by what law or work of works no but by the law of faith are you where are you at? oh that's it uh, sorry yeah, 27 sorry, sorry that, that was I should have said 26 sorry about 27. that okay that's good all right so what he's, he says this you can't be righteous through the law anymore. That's not how you're going to get it. And if you're in this room today thinking 
I have assurance because I know I keep the law. I know that I don't eat pork. I know I go to church on Saturday. This is me. This was me before. And that's that's how I gained my assurance is because I believe, okay, well, I got baptized. I don't eat pork. I don't cuss. I look at girls wrong once in a while. Uh, you know, I might have done a few things. But for the most part, I'm pretty good. And you ask anybody, uh, do you think you're going to heaven? They'll say, well, I think I'm a pretty good person. I mean, I've done... You know, I haven't killed anybody, or, you know, I haven't robbed a bank. You know, I don't look at my phone during class all the time. I'm not that bad. You know? <laughs> I'm, just <kidding. laughs> I'm just kidding. I wasn't talking about you. I'm just talking about Josh. So, you know, it, you, that's, that's the majority. Again, the majority of people think it's because whether I've done good or bad, and God's going to weigh them out in the future. He is going to look at all the works you've done. But there's a story in, in uh, Egypt where the Israelites, there was this, the last plague was this, uh, the angel of death was going to pass over everybody and kill anybody who didn't have the blood over the door. Remember that story? I don't, if, if you haven't heard it, it's, it's in Exodus. The, the, people were, the Jewish people were enslaved to the Egyptians, and God says anyone who doesn't have the blood, they killed they actually had to keep the lamb inside for a couple of days, like care for it, and then they killed it. And then they put its blood over the doorpost. So when the angel of death came through the camp, anyone who didn't have the blood died. <coughs> the firstborn of any family. So whether you're Jew, Egyptian, did not matter. The blood is what mattered. It was a foreshadow to what we have today, is that anybody who doesn't have Jesus' blood on you doesn't matter who you are, who you think you are, does not matter. Is that it's His blood alone that pr protects you from God's wrath. All right, and and that's the second error is legalism. And the early church was struggling with this. You remember what we talked about in Romans, that their book was being written to the Romans because the Jews were saying, "You guys are not saved. You don't keep all our laws. You're not even circumcised. You don't. You know, you shave your beards all funny. You get fades and." You know, we don't do that. You know, you can color your hair in different colors, you know, stuff like that. If, if, if Steve did that in those days, they would have shot him. They would have killed him. Nah, they would not let him in the church. Yeah, they did. But they would have said, you're not saved because that's not what we do. I want to read you uh, one more verse. I think it's, uh, let's see, Galatians. It's either 2.16 or 5.2. You know what? Once you Galatians 2.16. And Galatians 2.16, towards the end. Uh, and then the rest of us will go to 5.2. And we'll end here. We'll, we'll go over the last one next week. Where's Galatians? Galatians, towards the end. Uh, after Romans? After, yes, yes. After you're, Corinthians, clo you're getting close. Ephesians? Before that. Before that? Yeah. Galatians 5.2, 2.16, and we're going to go 5.2. And we'll end with this one. <laughs> All right, so where are you today? You get it yet? No. Okay, anybody else have 216? You want to help brother out? Yeah, we know that a Christian is not justified for work of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ. And not by works of the law. Mm. By works of the law, no one will be justified. By works of the law, no one will be justified. All right. I remember I had to do a sermon. I was I was preaching. I was on a Friday night. I was preaching, and I was working on my sermon all week. And it was this. It was it was the just shall live by faith, and I was messed up. I said, <laughs> "What the heck does that mean? That don't make any sense." I, I seriously, I thought, are you telling me that faith in Jesus gets you in? And I just couldn't believe it. No way. It's, there's no way. There, it's too easy. And I think it was hours before the message, it just hit me. That's what it is. Faith in Jesus. The just shall live by faith. I could not accept that Doing my best 
to keep the law wasn't enough. I could not accept that. But Jesus' sacrifice for me was. I couldn't do that because I didn't want to let go. I wanted to hold the rope. But faith in Jesus requires you totally letting go. There's not a thing you could do that you can be assured that you're saved other than all your faith in Jesus. You can try all these things. And in 5.2, the last one, it says, Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If, if you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. Okay? So, it, so in the Old Testament, that was big. Everybody had to be circumcised, and that was a sign that you're saved. Girls didn't have to do anything like that. It was all the guys. And if you, that's how they know, hey, well, he ain't circumcised. He definitely isn't saved. But Paul said, no, no, no. If you get circumcised thinking that that saves you, you've given up Jesus. You're choosing that instead of Jesus. Nothing, nothing can take his place. And then Paul later on tells them, you know, I was... I was the biggest T, I was the biggest Pharisee, but I gave it all up for Jesus. And that's the place you have to get to. So, you know, today, you guys have to think, examine yourselves. Am I really fully trusting in Jesus? Or am I still trusting in my works, things I've done? You should feel terrible when you sin. We should feel that. Don't feel kicked out, but feel that God... I know you're with me, and you're going to help me get better. And you're going to help me stop. Next week, we're going to talk about the last one, and that's called sacerdotalism. It's a weird word. I got it from R.C. Sproul. We're going to talk about that next week. All right? All your faith in Jesus alone. So if you die today and you're trusting in... I won't see you in heaven. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's pray.